the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 23rd. Two hurricane strength cyclones are active, Epsilon, a Category 1 near Bermuda, and Sordel, which is also a Category 1 typhoon in the South China Sea, headed towards Hainan Island in China. Those are the only two systems that are active as nameable entities at this point. Uh, both still have some power in them though. Epsilon then is rather large off the coast of Bermuda. The Tropical Storm Force wind field is just off the coast, or maybe just about reaching the coast of Bermuda. Day 155 of hurricane season, a 20% chance in the Caribbean Sea that will move on towards the Western Atlantic could also threaten Bermuda next week, believe it or not. In the Eastern Pacific, day 172 of hurricane season and still hardly anything to talk about at all. Um, it looks like it's taken a complete break in 2020, the Eastern Pacific, uh, but we still can't rule out late season activity. The Western Pacific is where it's at right now. Sordell, a Category 1, could intensify further to a Category 2 perhaps on approach to Hainan, should pass just south. Behind it, an 80% chance now for another disturbance that will probably move through the Philippines, could be a typhoon by the time it gets there, and now a 40% chance for that area that will be moving towards the Southern Mariana Islands and Guam. In the Indian Ocean, we have that one area of interest that's just about to make landfall in Bangladesh now. So we've dropped it slightly to 30% chance and that will be moving inland very soon indeed. So it's really just about to run out of time. So let's take a look at today's satellite imagery. This is the North Atlantic. You can see the banding from Epsilon there. Uh, the cloud coverage not quite reaching Bermuda, at least the main part of the storm. Uh, but you could still see some gusty winds gusting to tropical storm strength. Hurricane winds will be still very far away from the island. Uh, you can also see that central core that was just developing there in those later frames. Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet. Western Caribbean there you can see as well that little disturbance. The Eastern Pacific, fairly quiet here, um, hardly anything going on. The only thing you can really note there is a, a little system north of the Hawaiian Islands, non-tropical at this time, but every so often you get one of these systems that does develop into a subtropical or tropical storm, uh, but it's not going to be this one in the Central Pacific, not yet, um, but we could see something like that. Even up until December, it's happened before. In the Western Pacific then, you've got Sordell there. It's a classic Western Pacific typhoon look in its early stages when it's really blowing up the convection before an eye appears. Whether an eye will appear on this one remains to be seen, but very high convective cloud tops and a disturbance there to the east of the Philippines looking fairly good as well, starting to rotate a little bit. The South Pacific, uh, you can see it here, um, general cloudiness over Papua New Guinea into the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu that frontal system pushing through the Indian Ocean blowing up a lot of convection with that disturbance near the Bangladesh coast uh, the Ganges River Delta um, could be a local flooding event certainly uh, southern India also getting significant rainfall right now Here's a late look at Hurricane Epsilon, um, so you can see how it's been progressing there, not much of a satellite uh, frame unfortunately, but there you have it in any case, Epsilon has got that inner core that's certainly been looking decent today as, as, light, as night has fallen as well, that core looks like it's regenerating just a little bit again. National Hurricane Center forecast the second peak at 90 miles per hour, so that's something to watch out for, and there it is on the sandwich imagery as well. Uh, the scale there at the top doesn't quite match up, but there it is. You can see how the storm was looking earlier today with that banding feature. The eye did disappear a little bit, but it is now coming back. So Epsilon could go for a little bit more intensification. It will die off as it continues northeast in a couple of days. Sea surface temperatures underneath it are dropping. Um, and also it could still just about affect uh, the coast of Atlantic Canada, maybe with tropical storm force winds. This is what the models are saying. You can see there uh, most of the models are forecasting the storm to remain relatively um, stable in its intensity for a few days yet. Wind shear will be on a slow increase, currently only around 10 knots, but will rise into the 20s perhaps by the 24th. SST, sea surface temperatures, uh, are actually trending down just a little bit there, below the threshold required, 25 degrees Celsius right now. Uh, it will rise a little bit again by the looks of things before dropping completely. 
Typhoon Sword L, we've got better imagery of this one. You can track both of these storms in our 24-7 YouTube live stream, by the way. Just find us, find it on our channel, and you can see it there. Uh, enormous cloud tops, mainly displaced to the uh, south and east. The northwestern side looking a little bit dry, but this typhoon is certainly gaining momentum at this point. The model suggesting that it will peak as a high-end Category 1, maybe reaching into lower-end Category 2. That's what my thinking is right now. Um, wind shear, as you can see there, dropping down below 10 knots in the next 12 hours. So certainly that's uh, one indicator of strengthening. Sea surface temperatures will drop slightly. Relative humidity not looking too bad. Model still insistent that this storm will weaken rapidly between Hainan and the Vietnam landfall. Sea surface temperatures are uh, still very much the same as what we've been saying recently. The eastern Pacific still remaining warm uh, in the areas off the uh, Pacific coast of Mexico. So late season activity could still happen in that area for the next couple of weeks. The Atlantic, the uh, Caribbean Sea, very warm. You can see storm activity occurring there for several weeks to come yet. This season is definitely not over. Uh, but the outer, the wider Atlantic... Temperatures starting to cool, but still decent conditions across most of the basin, uh, all the way up to 20, 25, maybe even 30 degrees north. In the Indian Ocean, then, uh, the temperatures there, very warm indeed for that disturbance, but it's running out of time up until land. It's just about moving ashore. The Western Pacific getting much cooler off the Chinese coast, down to 26 degrees, some places lower, uh, but it's the Philippine Sea that we're really watching out for now. Looks like we have got the beginnings, or even the middle sequences here, of a train of tropical cyclones that are going to be moving through that area and into the South China Sea. Um, looking at sea surface temperature anomalies, very much above average in most of the Western Pacific. The Eastern Pacific uh, near the coast of Mexico is around average or just above as well. La Nina still quite strong, but uh, maybe slightly weaker than it has been recently. Uh, but that's probably just a blip. The Atlantic still well above average in most areas and you can see a blue patch there now behind where Epsilon was. Well, on October 23rd, 2015, I think this is the one that most people remember. Hurricane Patricia was peaking as a monstrous Category 5 storm with winds of over 200 miles per hour. And we were there to cover that as well back in, back in the day, I should say. Olaf also over there as a Category 3 and Champy in the Western Pacific as a Category 2. I remember it well. Patricia, Patricia went on to make a landfall on the western coast of Mexico as a borderline Category 4 slash 5 very powerful storm that will be remembered for aeons. Back in 2020, the season in the Atlantic that will be remembered for quite a while, I should imagine. The next name on the Atlantic hurricane list is Zeta. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Odalis. In the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name on the list is Malavi, followed by Goni. In the North Indian Ocean, we're waiting for Gati. In the Southern Hemisphere, when things start up, can't be long now, uh, but well, we'll wait patiently. The, uh, the Australian region, the next name is Imogen, followed by Joshua. The Southwest Indian Ocean, Alicia, followed by Bongoyo. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Yasa. We'll have another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.